Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where we have to keep in mind now that everything Disney does related to the box office in terms of release decisions and announcements, well, it's all with the ScarJo lawsuit in mind, because they're building their counter case. Don't think your movie did well, ScarJo? Well, let's not just compare it to F9, but to another Disney movie, Jungle Cruise. This fellow blockbuster was released the exact same way as Black Widow and did substantially less business at the box office and on Disney Plus premiere access. What a weird strategy for a studio to say, look, this movie did even worse. But it is important, and I think that it works because Jungle Cruise still did very well for Jungle Cruise, as we're going to discuss. And you don't hear Dwayne Johnson crying about it, but to be fair, that's because he was a partner with Disney in deciding to change the film's release strategy, and he was very behind it promotion-wise from day one. On that note, I don't see Dwayne Johnson suing anybody. He's way too prolific. He has Red Notice coming up for Netflix, Black Adam for Warner Brothers DC, his upcoming mysterious Red One Christmas franchise that's going to launch at Amazon, plus he's producing television, including for Disney+, Plus. not to mention all his side businesses. He has just too many revenue streams coming in for him to care too much about any single one to risk jeopardizing the rest of them by becoming litigious inside the industry. He wants to get along with everybody because he is. Plus, he's seriously thinking of running for president someday, and there's a serious chance he could win. So again, he just doesn't need the drama, because so much money's coming in for him. As for Jungle Cruise, it was a good play for him. He got another number one movie out of the, uh, out of the situation, and a pandemic opening on par with many of his non-pandemic openings. That's very interesting, and again, it makes Jungle Cruise look good, including matching the first Jumanji, which had some very long legs. Yes, the audience scores for Jungle Cruise are fantastic, as they should be. So I think The Rock might be using a slow cooker here, and we will see the Jungle Cruise film do very well as it trickles down the ancillary market over the next few months. Remember, before it becomes available to watch for free at no extra cost on Disney+, Plus, sometime in November, it's going to become available on PVOD, uh, for purchase and then for rental, and I think it's going to do extremely well uh, there. So, and, and Dwayne Johnson, I'm sure, as a major producer on the film, will participate in all that revenue. Uh, and yesterday, Dwayne Johnson even tweeted, there's a sequel meeting next weekend. I don't know if it's with Disney or not, or maybe just within his own production company, but they're talking sequel already, and that's right, The Rock is so busy he works on weekends. Oh, I work on weekends. It's, you know, uh, that's just the name of the game, especially entertainment. Uh, holidays and weekends are some of the busiest times. I really hope they make a sequel. And I think Disney will greenlight that sequel, by the way. Partially because in the movie, I think it makes sense to make a sequel from a business decision. But also, it'll keep Dwayne Johnson happy. And I think it'll make Emily Blunt very happy as well, as that's another guaranteed big payday coming up. She got paid a lot to be in the first movie. And I think they also, Disney wants to make sure that ScarJo remains a disgruntled party of one. Uh, Emma Stone is also said to be getting a sequel, as we know. Uh, and despite rumors, I don't think that she or Blunt will sue Disney like ScarJo unless ScarJo gets a settlement, which is another reason I don't think ScarJo will get a settlement because it's free money then. And of course, everybody else will sue. They have to make, they have, Disney has to make all the other talent feel it is not worth it. Uh, Black Widow being Scarlett Johansson's last hurrah as the character, at least for quite some time, might be partially driving her lawsuit. Look at all these other sequel deals making people happy. That's not in the cards for Scarlett Johansson. This was her last chance for a big Marvel superhero payday. And Disney might argue that that is definitely driving her lawsuit in a sour grapes kind of way. I also think the Delta variant continues to be a factor in these box office numbers that just aren't turning around after it looked like things maybe would with F9 and Black Widow. I was going to see Jungle Cruise in theaters this weekend, but because of the Delta variant, since it was available on streaming, I chose to watch it again with friends and family on Disney+. And I'm curious if you changed your plans because of what's going on. But still, Despite the growing Delta variant, I think that Disney will almost for sure release Free Guy and Shang-Chi exclusively in theaters as announced. Why? Then they might change it after that, but I think they're going to do this for the following reason. First, 
that would prove that Disney is not permanently switching their revenue stream over to Disney Plus, as Scarlett Johansson and her agent claimed on uh, Thursday and Friday. But that this was simply a temporary strategy done as an emergency measure during a pandemic. They're like, see, it was not the long-term plan. We went right back to, where, to the theaters only as promised. Also, I, do, I was thinking about it, and I think that they, they might also claim that these movies were hurt by having to, to wait so long. They could say that because Scarlett Johansson insisted we sit on her movie for over a year, um, yeah, over a year, uh, maybe it would have done better if we had released it at the beginning of the pandemic. So that's another thing that they could argue. Uh, and I think that that, you know, I think it's, it's going to be a tough decision to make for whoever gets to make it, a judge or an arbitra arbitrator. All right, so anyway, also the reason that they will keep uh, Free Guy and Sean chi in theaters only is that if these movies crater as theaters only releases, and there's a very good chance they will thanks to this rising Delta variant, then Disney can argue that they did the right thing with Black Widow's digital day and date release strategy. And then if they have to go back to it, they can be like, hey, rest of Hollywood, theater companies, and Scarlett Johansson's lawyer, we tried. It's just not, uh, it's not something that can be done at this point. Speaking of day and date releases, Jungle Cruise opened just a smidge above Space Jam 2, but that allows Disney to claim the biggest family opening of 2021. And who doesn't like being able to slap that on their movie, right? And Disney didn't give the movie away for free on its streaming service. Again, HBO Max decided to give their 2021 movies away at no extra cost because their subscription fee is about double Disney Pluses. But clearly, I think they could have charged, say, $20 extra for their movies on HBO Max day and date instead of the 30 that Disney is charging. I think there was a price point they could have gone with. The trades also stated that almost all the premiere access in-app purchases for Jungle Cruise this weekend came from within the United States. Now, that's, that must be inarguable. Now, the reasoning that the trades came up with was that it's a cultural thing, that overseas markets are still getting used to streaming content through an in-app purchase. That's weird to me. Who doesn't know how to press a button? Uh, so I'm curious, for those of you who live overseas, if you had a choice between seeing Jungle Cruise in theaters or on Disney Plus, did you decide, why did you decide not to watch it on Disney Plus? Uh, you know, was, is it a cultural thing? Is it, is it true that you're just not used to having to do that yet? Uh, I'd like to hear hear from you what the reasoning is because I again I've bought I've bought all the premier access movies during the pandemic through Disney Plus and it's very easy to do. All right, demographic breakdown in the United States shows a four quadrant movie to a degree. The Caucasian percentage is unusually high for a movie like this, but it might also mean again that more audiences of color chose to stream the film at home on premier access. Dwayne Johnson is an actor of color and the co-lead of the film, and Edgar Ramirez and Veronica Falcone uh, um, um, have small supporting roles. But I would say that there's a very strong chance that based on these numbers, uh, the, the sequel, if they do make it, will smartly add a larger role for another actor of color. That, if I were a suit at Disney, that is a thousand percent what I would do. Those numbers are too low. It should be a little bit more spread out. It should be more evenly spread out for that film, uh, especially with Dwayne Johnson in the lead. But again, maybe it is that more people, more people of color chose the, the premier access option. Now, some people in the industry are still banging that drum that it's streaming only that's ruining the movie business. Like if it wasn't for these day and date releases, the box office would be doing much better. But I don't think it's that simple a tune. I think there are other instruments in here, namely the, it's also the pandemic, <laughs> pandemic uh, drum. Uh, Cause I mean, if you look at the rest of the box office top 10, clearly most people still aren't comfortable going to the movies. I mean, there again, there was that window, which F9 and Black Widow occupied where it looked like everything was gonna open up again. Like we turned a corner and for their court case, Disney can say, hey, we did find the window for Black Widow. But I think with the Delta variant rising, I think people are starting to pull back a little bit. And to complicate things even further, I think a lot of the content that Hollywood is putting out there in theaters only simply isn't good enough. I mean, the content that people like, like Jungle Cruise and Space Jam 2, they're still able to get much bigger numbers than these other movies, even with their streaming component. So let's look at the rest of the top 10, which ain't pretty. 
The Green Knight and Stillwater have very weak audience scores and the weak box office to match. The Green Knight did do very well for an indie film, proving that the ad campaign was excellent. But those low audience scores, whoo, they show that director David Lowry couldn't deliver, which is worrying for his upcoming Peter and Wendy movie for Disney Plus, uh, which he also is taking a very realistic take with. I mean, I hate, I like realistic takes too, but you know, that can't be code for boring. Uh, so also Old and Snake Eyes, which di also didn't have, sadly, great, I liked both those films, but they did not have strong audience scores uh, when they debuted last week and their box office was equally poor. And they dropped considerably in their second weekends here. Snake Eyes was another 70% second weekend drop, further helping, again, Disney's defense against ScarJo. They're going to be going over this box office with a fine tooth comb for their defense. They'll be like, look, another one. It's not, and that was theaters only. Now, old, just to show you how bad the market is, well, they got away with a 60% drop. Hooray! <laughs> that film was so cheap to make, and again, I feel it'll do very well on PVOD, that I think ultimately Universal will be very happy here, if not already. I think they'll be very happy at the end, at the end of old's run, but I think right now they're feeling fine. But Paramount and Hasbro, whoo, not so much. G.I. Joe movies have never done particularly well, even pre-pandemic, so this might just mean that there isn't it isn't the brand that the two companies think that it is. Also, I have to say with the military angle, you know what I might do with G.I. Joe? I'd be reluctant to give up on G.I. Joe too, because it is a brand. It is a known brand. So maybe I would take a slight conservative bent to it, like the Tomorrow War or shows like Shooter or Yellowstone, which have done very well, to stand out in the crowded marketplace. I'd maybe go after that market, maybe with another movie, maybe with a G.I. Joe streaming show. But that's what I would go with. And I would see if Chris Pratt was available. All right, and in this, its third weekend, Space Jam 2 had another sizable drop. But hey, it's still a top 10 movie of the year, both domestic and global. Would you make a Space Jam 2? There's been uh, Space Jam 3, I guess, at this point. There's no discussion about it, but you know, I have to say, if I was Warner Brothers, I would consider it. Or maybe an animated series. There does seem to be value left in this brand, and I also think LeBron James clearly drives the market to some degree. I think there's money here. Now, what will happen when the Suicide Squad hits most countries next weekend and HBO Max? Uh, this weekend, it hit a handful of markets with no digital option just yet, and it pulled in $7 million overall. Now, it did $4.7 million in the UK, the biggest market that it hit, topping Jungle Cruise, which pulled in three point two for its opening. Now, for comparison... Black Widow opened in the UK with 9.4 and F9 with 8.3. So that's considerably less, but it's still better than Jungle Cruise. So to me, it sounds like the Suicide Squad domestically might open with a four in front of it, which would be huge. I mean, that would make it Warner Brothers' biggest pandemic opening to date, and it would match A Quiet Place 2, which was theaters only. I don't think it's gonna come close to F9 and Black Widow, but again, they were in a special situation. Uh, but I think having a four in front of it would be amazing. It could even have a five. It could even have a five. Let's see. But I think because I think it might if it I think that Suicide Squad, if it had been available for extra cost on HBO Max, would have had a five in front of it. But because you can watch it on HBO Max for free, uh, if you buy the no ad version, I think which is still around, what, $12, $14, that's cheaper than um, a lot of movie tickets, especially in the premium format. So I think that it's, I think it's going to have a four in front of it. If it has a three in front of it, I think that will be considered a disappointment because it's a big DC movie with such a high RT score. But all it has to do is get a four in front of it. And I think that's very doable. So we'll see. What do you think uh, the Suicide Squad is going to open at next weekend? And try and be reasonable. And you're, some of you are like, $100 million, Grace, because it's, it's going to be the return of DC. And remember, I don't think this is at all a win for DC. This is all about James Gunn, and it's a referendum on what happened with him with his scandal. And I think a lot of people felt they were unhappy what Disney did to him, and, and, and although, even though they made up. And so I think that's what's really driving the media and critic con and, and you know that conversation, even fan conversation about that film. It's totally about James Gunn. And right now it's looking really good for him. All right, let's look at streaming. Once again, Loki dominated in its fourth week. Although, who knew Amazon's Bosch was such a hot show? Do you watch that? People apparently love that thing. And it just goes to show you that in streaming, there are weird pockets of stuff that nobody knows about. Until now. 
Uh, thanks, Nielsen. And Sweet Tooth is also still in the top 10 and finally just got uh, rewarded with the second season uh, green light. I'm so excited. Speaking of the Tomorrow War, while Luca put up a heck of a fight in its third week, the Tomorrow War still managed to debut at number one. Uh, it was fun moving. Uh, no wonder Amazon wants a sequel. But so far, it's just being discussed. So far, it's just being discussed. Paramount, go grab them for G.I. Joe. Be like, come on, go be, G. be in my G.I. Joe movies. On Netflix this week, fans sent a clear message to Kevin Smith and company who had tried to spin the, the, the negative reaction last week as, you know, a, a couple of upset fans who were review bombing. But it's hard to argue with Masters of the Universe Revelation disappearing out of the overall top 10 and the top 10 TV shows after just one week, while so many other shows have stayed in those top 10s for weeks on end. You know, forget just two weeks. So I, I think... You know, that makes it a more serious situation. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the with part two. I mean, I think it's already done, right? I don't think they can reanimate it. All right, over on iTunes, F9 hit PVOD for purchase on Friday and easily took the top spot. It might be low rated by users, but hey, people are still getting it. And that's for tw that's a 20 bucks a pop. And while the rest of the top, and the rest of the top 10, by the way, is also full of recent theatrical releases that many decided to wait for, but did show up when it became available on PVOD. So money is being made for these movies. We just don't know how much, but again, people are waiting. And, and, and I think that's really interesting. So I, I, that's why I feel that Old and Snake Eyes, I don't know about Greenwater and Gr the Green Knight and Stillwater. I've combined them into a celebrity couple. I don't know if Greenwater will do well. I will do well though because those audience scores are so low, like really low. I think. What do you think will do well on PVOD? What are you waiting to watch on PVOD? I'm curious. Uh, so as as uh, for this coming week, The Suicide Squad hits most markets on Thursday night. Not just theaters, but HBO Max. Usually, you know, it debuts at midnight or three in the morning, seven p.m. on Thursday night, uh, Eastern Standard. So that's the afternoon for the West Coast. We're gonna do our watch along as soon as it drops. I can't wait. I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, and then also, it's the only big release of the weekend. Uh, well, Adam Driver keeps his delightfully weird indie cred going with Annette, which was hit with. Um, which will hit a handful of theaters after getting a mixed reaction out of Cannes. It's not a hot movie out of Cannes, but, you know, there will certainly be people who are interested in it. But if you'd like to stream that movie, you only have to wait till August 20th when it hits Amazon Video. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's new Apple TV series drops two episodes on Friday, whereas Netflix, who, of course, never lets you down with a bunch of content, they, have, they do, again, once again, have a bunch of content. Horror flick Aftermath hits Wednesday, and on Friday, there's new series Hit and Run from Israel, plus Lin-Manuel Miranda's Vivo, an acquisition from Sony Animation like The Mitchells vs. The Machines, which worked out very well for Netflix. We'll see how Vivo does. So that's this week's Movie Bath. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? How do you think Jungle Cruise did? And how do you think The Suicide Squad will do? Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.